the cost of existing, the cost of living, euphemistically called. Do you understand what's going on here? It's a scam. So you got all these collusive special interest groups that benefit by driving your cost of housing up, for example, which causes a chain reaction because everything else has to go up in price, services and commodities, because everybody's scrambling to pay a higher cost of living. Do you understand how this chain reaction works? So allowing this is just allowing tyranny, allowing the tyrants to just, just run roughshod over people forever in perpetuity. Turning your back on the weak links in society, saying, ah, they don't matter. They're unskilled. They don't have an education. We don't care about them. They're chumps. They're passive. They're stupid people. We don't need them. Uh, plenty more where they came from. We're shipping in young, strong immigrants every day. We're, you know, we're upsetting the apple cart south of the border, Latin America. You know, we got Hillary Clinton and Obama down there doing this stuff purportedly from uh, Mexican reporter Max and Stacy had on their show years ago. That's what he was saying. Hey, he knows firsthand what's going on better than we do up here. Okay. And so they're causing the problem. These gangs, thugs taking over their people's property and all that, causing all these desperate people to migrate north. So they do it on purpose. You understand this? You understand what's going on here, how this works? So while I'm not a xenophobe, I welcome everybody in the world to come to America. In fact, I admire people that admire American values. Okay, our ideals. Okay, that's great. But we do it in orderly, logical fashion. We take care of our own desperate, destitute people first. Oh, native-born American sons and daughters. Okay, and then we open, tear down the, the walls. And we let everybody that wants to come to America in. Okay, but since we are the most influential nation on earth, if we have stability in America, by extension, it's going to spread throughout the world and people are going to want to stay in their own homelands. So we're not going to have all this mass immigration in America. You understand why these people, they need the problems. They absolutely, the, 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 the worst anathema that could ever happen to these people is problem solving. It's like, oh my God, do not even think about solving the problem of desperate poverty. We need people to be poor. Desperately poor, hopefully. That's job security. Do you understand? We will be rendered irrelevant if we start solving problems. And that is the main problem we got to keep intact. We got to keep people hungry, desperate. Do you understand? Scared, filled with fear, insecure. We got to snatch their freedom right from under their noses. And they did that gradually and slowly. They've normalized slavery in America through a minimum wage. We got this 50 billion a year goes into Section 8 housing to subsidize housing costs for those that can afford it. You live in New York, you're renting a flat, 2,000 bucks a month. And the government comes in, pays 1,800 of that because they say you're on a minimum wage job. All you can afford is this 200 bucks a month. That's your cost share. You, and then they're going to pay that in perpetuity and tell you, you're radical liberal, you're bleeding heart. If you want to just buy people houses and solve the problem, you don't want that to happen. I mean, we want to keep mooching off that 50 billion. Let's keep take Democrats and Republicans. So when I say it's political, it ain't Democrat Republican political. That'd be great. Oh, that that'd be an easy call. I'd just always vote Democrat, always vote Republican. It is not that easy. It's a juggernaut of evil. Okay, we're in a lot of trouble. There are some very powerful forces opposed to fixing societal's ills. We all have to understand that fundamentally. So they don't want checks and balances. You think they want to be on a leash, controlled? That how much they can steal from you? No, they want the sky to be the whatever we say. We want to keep stealing. Hand over fist, more and more and more. We don't know control. We're snot-nosed, spoiled, bratty children, drunk on the blood of saints, and, and we want to keep having our way forever. So, you you know, nanny, nanny, boo-boo, if you want us, come and get us. But, you know, we're armed to teeth. We don't value conscience. we got a lot of mindless uh, minions out there that are willing to fight our battles for us. And so, uh, we, you know, we're going to, good luck, you know, because we got the power. We're at the top echelons of the government. We're congressmen and senators, and we rubber stamp what, you know, we're lapdogs for the Federal Reserve. And then the Federal Reserve also has a labor department in their pocket, obviously. I mean, how do you explain them being deliberately remiss? And these people know how to calculate the CPI, the Consumer Price Index. And these people have Harvard degrees, PhDs, master's degrees, and all that crap. So don't tell me that they don't know how to properly uh, calculate the consumer price index every year. Okay, so giving minimum wage workers uh, uh, an adequate cost of living adjustment, whether up or down, is 100% justifiable. 
okay? And conversely, okay, it's 100% not justifiable not to do it, okay? Because then you're saying it's okay to give them pay decreases, okay? Because for all intents and purposes, it's all one and the same. Do you understand? If your cost of living goes up and you don't get a wage increase, okay, to match it, is there any difference than if your cost of living had stayed the same and your pay went down? Absolutely not. It is the exact same effect. You have low, lower buying power, less buying power now. Though the cost of living didn't change, but the amount you're getting did. So if the cost of living goes up, okay, and you don't get an adequate, even if, it's a, if you get a little cost of living adjustment, a little up, that's what it's been doing. It's been going a little bit up, but the cost of living has been going up, you know, leaps and bounds. Well, the cost of well, the adjustments, the cost of living adjustments have going up and trickle, trickle up. Just, oh, just enough to say, well, look, look how, you know, benevolent we are. How generous. Oh, minimum wage, those spoiled brats. How dare they? Who do they think they are? They're unskilled labor working in farms and factories and and in restaurants, the food service industry, and supermarkets, and this and that, and the next thing. And who needs them? We got, uh, we're bringing in young, strong immigrants daily. We'll ship all our manufacturing overseas to China, where, you know, five, ten bucks a day, they, people have a middle class life. And here, you need 200 bucks a day minimum to ever have, hope to have a middle class life just about anywhere except BF Arkansas. But that's okay. It's competition, man. We got to bring down the standard of living in America. It's to save the planet, for God's sake. Well, well, they're big fat hypocrites. You understand how evil the days are, and I'm trying to help you understand. So the employers would have complained every year. They say, "What do you mean I got to pay more by law?" So they would have got angry, and then we would have said, "Hey." Yeah, you better get angry because, hey, you know what? What if the same thing happens next year? Instead of raising wages from 5 to $10 an hour, now you got to pay them 20 You understand? They would say, oh, we're not having market manipulation. We're not having the special interest groups colluding. We're not having price rigging, price fixing, driving up people's cost of living, this chain reaction. The employer's got to pay their employees more by law, which is 100% justifiable, just to maintain the same standard of living that was set so many years ago when the minimum, federal minimum wage was established. We need to keep the federal minimum wage intact so as we don't become divided, balkanized in America. Do you understand? So you ought to be able to live anywhere you want, whether it's BF Arkansas, San Francisco, California, Miami, Florida, wherever, Manhattan, New York, I don't care. Hon Hon Honolulu, Hawaii, wherever, Kauai. You can only be in one place at one time. We, the people, should have it our way. If God says it's okay, that's how it should be. We could have such a superfluity, such an abundance. Extra houses everywhere in the world, anytime you want to go anywhere. Of course there's vacancies. That's the world we could have in short order. And that's what God wants for us. He wants us to be set free. It must and will happen. That's having a little bit of faith in God. That's what's coming down the pike. And that's good news to the righteous. So you want to be righteous, right? Values, godly values. And they're not a mystery. Tap into it. Tune into it. Learn for yourself firsthand. Do your own research. Check everything I say. Okay? Because I'm not accurate about every little thing. I mean, last week I said that uh, the Persian Empire was the cradle of mathematics. And then I said, well, what was I, right? I mean, somebody told me that, that I trusted. Obviously, it's stuck in my head. But no, I found out, well, yeah, they, they were really into math. And they perfected the decimal or some darn thing like that. And, but actually, you could go, some people will say it was the Greeks. And some will say it was the Egyptians. So, you know, check out what I say. I, I don't mind. I can eat humble pie just fine. I, I love the stuff. I mean, I don't love it, but you know what I mean? It's good for you. Okay, so do your own research. Check out the things I say, and if anything I say doesn't jive with Scripture, then take Scripture every time. Your interpretation, your translation is every bit as valid as anybody else's. If you tap into the Spirit of God, remember, God wants us to live by the Spirit of the law, not the letter of the law. The letter of the law will destroy all of us. 
Okay, but Jesus gave us two new commandments, very simple laws, commandments to follow. Easy. His yoke is easy. His load is light. He doesn't want his children burdened. Do your parents want you burdened? No, of course not. Love me above all else. Of course, you wouldn't have existence. You wouldn't know what love is. So, yes, honor God. It's so easy. It's like falling off a log, a floating log. Love God above all. Yeah, it's so reasonable. God says, that. I'm, I'm the pottery, the pottery. I love you more than you'll ever understand. So, you know, spend some time with me and, and understand, intimate, be intimate with me. And, you know, we'll have discourse together and all that. And I, I want to be your friend. If you want to be my friend, I, that's great. That's a beautiful relationship. That's what he's after. So it's just a beautiful thing to have. But he'll, he won't lead you astray. He'll give you the right translation. And you're looking for the highest and best translation according to him. You're tapped into the spirit. So the other commandment he gave us, these two commandments, love one another as I have loved you.